Hey friends, today we're doing a subwoofer and amplifier install in the back of a 2010 Cadillac CTS. We will just be showing the amplifier hooking up part. I'm not gonna show you the whole dash piece, stuff like that. I'm going to assume maybe you've got that done already or you can check out another video. For this install, we are going to be doing a Scar Audio 12 inch sub with an amplifier and the wiring kit ordered as a package on Amazon. I'll link that down below for you. But here's that wiring kit. First thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna run the RCAs and remote wire. So I'm not gonna show that process and then I'll jump back in when we get back right here ready to do the battery. The Scar Audio amplifier kit comes with a, a nice little fuse block here. Comes with your power wire, ground wire, and RCAs. This is a four gauge kit for about 800 watts RMS. And it comes with this little goodie bag here. It's got some ring terminals and shields and zip ties. We'll put that to use as well. Yeah, this is the stuff I'm not making the video of, running the RCA cables and everything back to the trunk, just because there's so many different ways to do it. My son already has an aftermarket stereo in his, he has an Alpine deck, so we're using the RCA outputs on that deck to run those back to the amp. If you don't have an aftermarket deck, you have the option, you can use a line out converter, then you would do everything back here in the trunk. But since we already have that as an option on his stereo, we're gonna run the RCAs off there so he can control everything. Uh, um, easily from the deck for the subwoofer. Okay, after about 30 minutes or so, we got the wires back here from the front. We have the remote power wire as well as those RCAs. And now we're gonna run the power and ground wires, which are gonna go right here in the trunk compartment on the passenger side of the CTS. Makes it super simple. Power, we're gonna connect to this terminal here. I'm gonna disconnect that and look to see how we're gonna connect that. I don't know yet. And then the ground, we'll either put the ground right on that battery post right there of the battery, or we'll go right down there where the battery is actually grounded to the car. And that's where we'll put the ground for the amplifier. And what we're actually going to do is we're gonna put the amp back in this area probably. So that way I don't have to worry about running super long ground wire. I can use this one here and maybe we'll put the amp right back there. That might be the better option right there. We'll run our power and ground between these two panels. You can kind of lift up and run the wires under there. So it'll be nice and hidden. You see, I've already done that with the, the ground wire. So I might just have to reposition that and run it back there a little bit further. But this battery, there's this cover thing you pop open. There's this weird lever in here. I was trying to figure out how to get this thing out and it looks Looks like you gotta pop it up out of here. Slide it to the right like this, lift up, and then turn it all the way left. So now the battery's loose and I can actually pull the battery cable off just like that. So that's how you disconnect that. And now we're gonna find a way to attach this amp wire to this guy, which would probably be up under that cover on top of this right here. Looks like there's some probably bolts in there. So we're gonna pull this off really quick and take a look at that. Okay, to get this cover off, just so you know, when you flip it over, there's this thing here. I used a screwdriver, pried it under this side and popped it open and it allows that latch to come off. So now we can pull this cover off to get to those. Okay, so now I've got this cover off. We're gonna use that bolt right there to attach the power cable, this one right here. So I'm just gonna un screw this bolt. I'm gonna put the power cable with the ring terminal on there and bolt that back down. If you haven't done so already, be sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button so when I do cool stuff like this, you can follow along. Also, be careful doing this. The ground wire is right there. It might be a, a good idea to go ahead and disconnect that so that way you don't have to worry about this thing hitting that thing, sparking. I mean, there's plenty of room. It shouldn't hit it, but just be careful. I think we're going to put our fuse block right back here. There's plenty of room. So we're gonna run the positive cable off of here, straight back into the fuse block, which will mount to that side panel and then run the wire down along the side back to where the amp's gonna be. So on this fuse block, cover can pop off and each side has these bolts and this is where these ring terminals are gonna come into play. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the power cable down and have one side that's the input on this and then We'll take the power wire after we've cut it, put a ring terminal on the other side, which is gonna be the one that comes off this side that'll go to our amplifier. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna hook up this battery side so we can get it mounted and kind of uh, get it up out of the way. This kit does come with one of the ring terminals already on here. This is the side we'll connect to that battery cable right there. So I just need to cut some of this off and then put a ring terminal on the other side. Again, it's pretty close right there. 
it's not very far away, but I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra cable in case I end up having to move it or pull it out so I have better access to it. So there's that cable, ring terminal on that side. I'm gonna go ahead and strip that back a little bit there and put the ring terminal on that side that'll connect to that fuse block. Most people, like myself, won't have wire strippers that go up to four gauge or zero gauge or anything like that. So I'm just gonna lay the ring terminal down and kind of lay this cable right next to it there. And I'm gonna use a utility knife, like a box cutter knife, and slowly cut around this jacket to peel it off. And then I'll put the wire in there and crimp it down. This cable is really easy to work with. The, the jacket on these is pretty soft, so it's pretty easy to cut around that. And I just kind of spun it around and cut it all, so now I can just pull it right off. We got our wire strips, we got our ring terminal, and we have these little sleeves that go on this wire. So we're gonna put this on here, slide it back, take the wire, put it through the ring terminal. We're gonna go ahead and clamp this down on here. And you can see, I, I put quite a few quite a bit of wire in there. You want this longer as opposed to shorter because that can be pinched back a little bit. But now I'm just gonna use my wire crimpers, crimp this down, slide the sleeve over. And there you can see that one's all ready. That's the battery side, that'll be the fuse block side. So we're gonna get this put on the fuse block and get that mounted. Actually, we'll do the other side of the cable first, get both hooked up, blah, 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 whatever. We'll show you. So again, wire stripped, we have the sleeve. There's one smaller side, one larger side. We're gonna slide the smaller side over the wire. That's the part that'll be on the wire back here. Leave it a little bit wider there. And then I'm going to use my vice grips or my, my table clamp, whatever the heck you wanna call it. I'm gonna clamp this down, slide that up and this other side of the cable to go to the amplifier, we'll be ready. Okay, what I've done for now, I've got the fuse block here. I pulled the fuse out. I've got the power wire that's gonna run to the amp. Coming off this way, I've got the power wire I'm gonna hook to the battery right here. So I'm gonna mount this where it goes with the wires hooked up, and then I'm going to attach the battery cable before I put the fuse back in here. And I put this cover back on, because that's gonna hold these wires. Oh, I'll snap it back into place. That's gonna actually hold those wires and keep them from going anywhere. There we go. When you go to install this to keep any wires from accidentally touching metal anywhere, giving you a spark, you definitely don't want to do that. Let's see here. Stop recording. That there is how that power wire is gonna come off of this battery post, come out the back side of the cover when I put it back on and, and mount it right there. And here it is, the cable from the battery for the amplifier coming out right next to that one and it's gonna go to the fuse block which will be back there kind of uh, behind the battery. Right back there you can see that's where we're gonna mount that fuse holder alongside the battery there, give us easy access to it whenever we need it. It's gonna look really sharp right there too. For the ground wire, we did just decide to go ahead and ground on top of this uh, bolt right here. This bolt just loosens and tightens the, the negative ground post. It's just super easy to get to it, so that's why we decided to do that, and it's really close to where the amp will be. But like I said, could have put it right back here as well, but it was just as easy to do that. So, batteries connected, wires are run. Now it's time just to put the amp in, and honestly, hook it up to the amplifier, and oh my gosh! Look at that, it's Mr. Pip. You know what that means, it's break time. Well, Mr. Pip brought us out Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. So this is what we're gonna be drinking for uh, break time today. Good stuff, huh? Good stuff, Pip. Thanks, Pip. It's, thanks, Pip. <sighs> We are gonna be mounting the amplifier right back there. That way the wires for the, the power and ground will come out right there. We've got the RCAs that'll connect on the back side coming through up there. And then we'll run the speaker wires that came in this kit as well. Right here, we'll cut this down to length. We'll run it from the amp over to this guy here. And you can see the SCAR sub we're, we're using is the SDR1X12D2. It's a 600 watt RMS sub. It looks pretty nice. Nice big foam surround on there for some excursion. Nice ported box. I'm gonna have to look it up to see what it's tuned to so we can set the subsonic filter on the amp. You wanna make sure you always set a subsonic filter on a ported box so it cuts off the the power going to the subwoofer below the tuning frequency, or you do risk blowing your sub. Something kind of interesting, and just point it out because it was odd. When we pulled this out of the plastic, it smells like Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, whatever that is. That's what it smelled like. 
The box does have some nice little push pins on here for uh, um, the speaker wire cable. So you just push it in, slide the wire up through. There's like a little hole thing. And when you let go, it releases, but the spring pushes it forward, push some pressure on there so it holds them in place. All right. And my son is tucking wires right now up out of the way so that way they're nice and hidden and this thing is going to look very slick Woo! there it is guys sub amp fuse block right back there mounted to that wall wires all run nice and neat the only other thing i thought about doing was running the wires underneath this part here and over but honestly it's close enough right there that just coming out there doesn't look too bad We've got it mounted down so it's not going to go anywhere and put this cover back on and this trunk is done look at that There you go, guys. That's how you install this kit from Scar Audio. Again, link down below. Really simple kit to install. Comes with everything you need. I definitely get this. This is a great value for the money. All right, what'd you think? Was that easy? Was it hard? It's pretty easy. Pretty easy. Anyone could do it? Yes. Yep, just follow along the video. You can do this yourself. So that's it, guys, for today's video. Again, thanks for uh, checking it out. And until next time.